Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. We're bringing her back on for this episode. We have <laughs> Tina Balenson, the co-founder and CEO at Seven Starling, which was formerly known as June Motherhood. Tina, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excellent. You have all the nice pictures behind you for those that are watching. I, I like the whole <laughs> backdrop. I have to put a backdrop so you can't see the, uh, the paperwork <laughs> behind me, uh, but it's good to chat. Yeah, I've been working on upgrading my work from home situation and to make Zooms a little bit more interesting with me. So <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I like it. I'm jealous. I need to step up my, I'm, I'm moving in a in like two months though. So I, it, it doesn't seem worth the effort at this point. No, I'll have to do um, it at the new place. No. You gotta well, just make an inspo folder <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to collect all your ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, Tina, I'm super excited to have you back on the podcast. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the new things happening with the company. Uh, I think we should get right into it. So it, it'd be great if you could talk us through, uh, basically you, you recently came out of beta, right? Um, you were formerly known as June Motherhood. Can you talk more about that? And we'll, we'll go into some other things today. Yes. Um, so before diving right in, I can give like a quick background on Seven Starling, formerly June Motherhood, in case people don't remember. Um, so Seven Starling is a platform that is making high quality maternal care more accessible. And we connect our members with experienced doulas and supportive peer groups. And the whole experience is guided by our proprietary curriculum that supports expecting new families from early pregnancy. So around eight weeks, all the way through one year postpartum after they deliver. Um, so it's a really comprehensive offering um, and the whole model is grounded in community and group-based care. Um, so that's a little bit of context on what we do. Um, and then just to talk a little bit about our recent um, launch. So we've been operating in beta over the past year um, under June Motherhood. Um, we have been collecting a ton of data and insights around how our you know, customers interact with our app, um, what content they find engaging, how to hire and train the best doulas to deliver the experience, because this is not necessarily what they're accustomed to doing. Um, and it's, whole, it's this whole integrated um, experience um, that is very new and different from what exists today. Um, and so we learned a ton about how to build and deliver that care. And now we're really excited to launch with Seven Starling um, and make the platform more available and accessible to all parents across the US. I'm really excited to, to see you continue to grow the, the company, uh, especially under the, under the new name, you're out of beta, and then you recently raised uh, a round of funding. Can you talk a little bit about that and really, I guess, um, what the use of proceeds will really go towards? Yeah, definitely. So we raised $2.9 million. Um, and that round was led by Pair VC, um, Magnify Ventures, and Expa. Um, and we're really excited about our group of investors because it includes both product and tech focused investors and thinking about that digital experience, but also more mission and family focused investors that care a lot about what the future of family tech looks like. Um, so we're super excited. And in terms of our next steps, we really focus on like two main things. So the first is around how do we integrate with the broader healthcare ecosystem? So currently we offer a D to C subscription um, that starts at $37 a month um, to get access to our platform. But we really see so much potential in scaling the offering and integrating with partners such as providers, health systems, and payers to drive that access. And so a lot of what we're working with is like, what does that integration look like and how do we fill in the gaps in care? Um, and the second major component that we're really focused on, on is deepening our curriculum, specifically around mental health, um, which is obviously like such a needed area when it comes to maternal health. Um, and there's such a lack in resources. And so our model is like really uniquely set up to not only offer support, but also to help people identify when they're struggling and kind of help them navigate through the process of finding the right care for them. And so we're really focusing on mental health, um, specifically in the postpartum period. And you and I were talking about this a little bit before uh, the podcast, but 
one of the ways you want to continue to, to grow the company is through scaling uh, via partnerships. Can you talk a little bit about that for, for the audience? Definitely. Um, so just for context, one of like the key trends that we're constantly keeping an eye on is the OBGYN shortage in the US and how it's continuing to get worse. And the fact that OBGYNs have just so much on their plate, um, they are they have a huge burden in terms of the amount of things that they have to cover. And so those prenatal appointments are getting shorter and less frequent. And for folks that are located in your rural areas, they often have to drive up to one or two hours just to get to that appointment. So there's this trend that's happening. And the way that we've actually built Seven Starling is to complement traditional OBGYN care to lessen the load on doctors and all the things that they have to cover um, and provide that emotional, physical, and psychological support throughout that entire journey and have the OBGYN or midwife, if you're working with a midwife, really focus on making sure that you and your baby are healthy um, and you know, preparing for a healthy delivery. Um, and so the way we are thinking about integrating is just thinking about how do we support providers? How do we integrate them into, how do we integrate ourselves into their workflow? How do we make this really easy so they can just really focus on those like high need areas and we can fill the gap um, with all the rest. Yeah, it's really exciting. I, I love that strategy too. Um, I, I think when, when done appropriately, right? Uh, scaling through partnerships while, uh, with people that are, are like-minded and are trying to um, solve similar but yet different problems than, uh, than, than you're solving, I think is super important. Um, you both have a, a sim similar missions, right? When a really good partnership comes together. So uh, I have no doubt you'll be able to form lots of those solid partnerships that continue to you know, execute upon your mission and move forward. So that's super exciting. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and just so the audience knows, you know, you are already on, so they'll have the ability to go back. And if they want to hear more about you and your background, that was done on the first episode that you were on uh, the podcast. But we like to do these, these follow-ups. It's really great to hear where you're at, especially when so much has happened since you last came on only, what, a couple couple months ago, I think it was, maybe, maybe almost yeah, it was a, year a few ago. months ago, but yeah. a few months ago, but in startup land, that's like a year. <laughs> yeah, time, time flies. So, uh, so they'll be able to go and see that but um, really appreciate you coming on for this, uh, this quick episode to, to update us on where you're at. And we wish you the best of luck and can't wait to have you on again uh, very you. soon to talk about what, what else is happening. Totally. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure chatting, Jared, as always. Um, and excited to be back on soon. Great chatting.